Okay, now we're in the beautiful tundra. Look at those those uh, caribou uh, feasting on some lichens and plants growing north of the Arctic Circle. The tundra covers most of the land north of the Arctic Circle, so north of 60 degrees north. It is only found in the north. There is no tundra in the southern hemisphere. They're very cool, um, dry climate, very short summers. Uh, precipitation is low, 200 to 600 millimeters of precipitation. Uh, very low rates of decomposition just because it's cold. When something dies, it just sort of lays on there and decomposes very slowly. There's a lot of different species that are found there, and uh, you can get very high numbers of them too. Uh, in general, people haven't lived, many people haven't lived in the tundra. There, there have obviously been uh, people living there uh, from uh, 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 native populations. Uh, Aboriginal populations, but uh, now most people that are moving there are people that have been working on um, uh, oil and gas extraction, mining, and uh, and so it has increased as resources have become more difficult to find. Um, this is a look in an air view of a uh, landscape in the tundra you get these interesting landscapes you get these bog areas and you get these polygons and what happens is uh in the brief short summer the surface will melt but it leaves ice underneath uh so you get this beneath the soil you get this layer of permafrost and then when the surface melts you, you start start to see it form these uh little pond areas and so we get uh, areas that have uh, lower amounts of vegetation surrounded by areas with larger amounts of vegetation. And you get these uh, really interesting polygon patterns in the surface. A lot of little wetlands will pop up then. It's very, very the surface because the water won't drain away because of the permafrost underneath. As you can see, we're very high north, um, very high latitudes. So we are um, across, uh, we find this biome across uh, northern North America. We've got it around the edge of Greenland. We're in Iceland and then across Eurasia. And uh, it's a very widespread um, biome band across the, across the north. And we can see from each one of these climate diagrams, we've got a very short period where the temperatures are above freezing, no matter where you are. And most of the most of the areas, it's very low amounts of precipitation, pretty constant all year. But remember, the pre precipitation for most of the year is going to be in the form of snow. So we got snow forming here for most of the year. Even though the summers are short, because of the tilt of the earth, the summers have almost 24 hours of sunlight, um, 24 hours of daylight every day, which means uh, you, you probably would have trouble sleeping there. Beneath the soil, the soil will not th thaw all the way down, just the surface will thaw, so you end up with a layer of permafrost ice down beneath the soil. That means the soils on the surface as the snow melts become waterlogged. And because it's relatively cold, you don't get a lot of evaporation. Plants that are found there, uh, there are some shrubs, sedges, grasses, mosses, and lichens. Lichens are a symbiote. Uh, lichens are a combination of algae and fungi living together. Tundra animals tend to be migratory. They're moving around with the with the uh, plants that are becoming available, and the carnivores are following the herbivores. The uh, herbivores can include muskox, caribou, reindeer, lemmings. White foxes are some of your, uh, or arctic foxes are some of your carnivores. Just snowy owls, wolves. It's the um, tundra is found at the northernmost limits for plant growth. You will also find um, 
alpine tundra up on the mountaintops at high altitudes, which we'll talk about. The plants are generally uh, low growing. They form a mat or a shrubby. So you can see that we have a, a few little spots here where there's some shrubs, but other than that, it's uh, pretty much mosses and lichens and low growing plants. Um, but then um, in the mountains and the mountain tops, we can find uh, basically an, an alpine tundra that is growing up at high altitudes. It's not, not just in the, the Arctic, but you get this alpine tundra as well. And the alpines, um, the mountains are a, a, an amazing amount of diversity because they're scattered basically at the, the top altitudes of biomes all around the world. So mountains make little islands of, of tundra, Arctic tundra, or sorry, alpine tundra up in the sky. They are um, often found in areas where you have geologic activity, mountain building is occurring as, as tectonic plates are colliding. The climate changes as you go up in elevation. And uh, so we find that the climate changes, uh, you could be at the same elevation on different mountains, but if you're at different latitudes, as well is obviously going to be differ, different depending on how far north you are. The soils tend to be well drained in the alpine tundra uh, and rather thin. So because of the slopes, the water is going to just rush downhill. Uh, going to be, tend to be a rocky soil as opposed to a boggy soil. And we find that the plants, the flora and the animals, the fauna will change as you go up the mountain. Historically, we use them for raw materials. We use them for mining uh, because the soils are not good for um, doing any sort of agriculture. But you can also, you know, there are communities that have traditionally lived up in mountain areas for uh, seasonal livestock grazing. So here we're in the tropics. We're in the tropical savanna. And then you look at here and we've got Mount Kilimanjaro. And so up at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, you get to a point up here where you're above the tree line. So from this point on, you're such a high elevation that you cannot grow any trees in this area. And then we get to a spot in Kilimanjaro even higher than that, where it keeps snow and ice year round. And that that you have a, an area up there of, of glaciers. Now, what we're finding with climate change um, is that uh, these mountains are getting warmer and it's changing those uh, biome locations and these boundaries are adjusting with that. So the trees are moving up the sides of the mountains now with climate change. And also with climate change, we're finding that these ice caps are starting to disappear. So you can see, take a look at this picture of Mount Kilimanjaro from a few years ago. And then currently, you can see Mount Kilimanjaro has lost most of its glaciers. The ice has disappeared off of the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. So these biomes, there's a rapid change of ecosystems as you go up these mountains going from tropical up into um, very cold ones, but we're also finding that they are changing rapidly, one of the first signs of climate change. The problem with losing these glaciers up on the top of the mountains is that, that right, melting water every summer from those glaciers um, in mountain ranges has been the source of uh, water for many of the communities living downhill. Alpine tundra, tundra is found at high elevations. You can find high enough mountains at all latitudes. Um, unlike the Arctic tundra, the daylight here is going to be variable depending on your latitude, but there's still a lot of the same restrictions that you find with uh, growing there as you find with the Arctic tundra. So you look at where you find these mountain ranges and we can see in general the mountain ranges in North America because of the movement of the tectonic plates um, in North America, the plates are colliding here and we've got these um, mountains forming in north-south 
uh, directions across North America and South America. And then when we look in Europe and Asia, like the this plate is colliding with uh, Eurasia and forming the mountains um, right across here, the Himalayas are being formed. And so we find the mountains in Europe and Asia generally go east and west. And these areas where you have all these little mountains, it's going to be a completely different biome on those mountaintops than you found in the surrounding areas. We had this video the last time uh, as a brief introduction, and so I'm just going to play it again because I think it, it gives you a very good over overview. Biomes are major communities of organisms that have a characteristic appearance and are distributed over a wide area defined largely by vegetation and regional variations in climate. Ecologists recognize between 8 and 14 major categories of biomes. The most commonly used terms to identify biomes include tropical rainforest, savanna, desert, temperate grassland, temperate deciduous forest, temperate evergreen forest, taiga, and tundra. Moisture and temperature are key environmental factors in determining which biomes are found where. Tropical rainforests receive 140 to 450 centimeters of rain per year and contain at least half of the Earth's species of plants and animals. The soil in tropical rainforests is not nutrient-rich. Most of the nutrients are held in the plants. Savannas are grasslands that border the tropics and receive 75 to 125 centimeters of rain per year. This environment is characterized by alternating rainy and dry seasons. Savannas are often inhabited by huge herds of grazing animals that migrate in response to the seasons. Deserts receive less than 25 centimeters of rain per year. Vegetation is sparse, and survival depends on water conservation. Temperate grasslands are found halfway between the equator and the poles. These temperate regions are characterized by fertile soil. Temperate deciduous forests occur in regions with warm summers, cool winters, and plenty of rain. Dominant species of trees include oak, maple, ash, and hickory. Temperate evergreen forests occur in regions where winters are cold and there is a strong seasonal dry period. The taiga consists of a great ring of northern forests consisting of coniferous trees. This ecosystem is one of the largest on Earth, with long, cold winters and most of the limited precipitation falling in the summer. In the far north, above the taiga, few trees grow. The grassland, called tundra, is open, windswept, and often boggy. Trees are small and confined to regions near lakes and streams. Large grazing animals, including reindeer and caribou, as well as carnivores, such as wolves and foxes, live in these areas. Looking through the, the different biomes, there's a, we already covered in the other um, presentation uh, the earlier parts of the chapter, and now you're into these biomes. For each biome, you should be able to explain how the traits of the plants and the traits of the animals um, uh, can function in that different environment and, uh, and how they affect the other organisms in the environment. So this was uh, section 2.3 of your textbook. So at the end of section 2.3, there are a couple of concept review questions. The first one is, why do these regions, whether tropical, desert, or temperate, that include high mountains, tend to be the most biologically diverse? You should be able to answer that question thoroughly. And number two, why would the soils in tropical rainforests generally be depleted of their nutrients more rapidly compared to the nutrients in temperate forest soils? So there's something special about the soils in every single biome. 
and uh, you should be able to explain how these soils are functioning differently. Then there are the review questions that cover the whole chapter at the back, which includes some specifically on the biomes. And uh, don't forget to uh, read Appendix A. Moving ahead, the next presentation is going to be on Chapter 5, which is on temperature relations. And uh, the investigating the evidence we'll do then is going to be investigating the evidence 5, which is on lab experiments. See you then.